Hello everyone! In this Python statistics estimation and mathematics tutorial, we introduce the concept of importance sampling. The importance sampling method is a Monte Carlo method for approximately computing expectations and integrals of functions of random variables. The importance sampling method is extensively used in computational physics, machine learning, and particle filters for state estimation of dynamical systems. For us, the most interesting application is particle filters for state estimation of dynamical systems. This topic will be covered in our future tutorial. For the time being, it is of paramount importance to properly explain the importance sampling method. Besides explaining the importance sampling method, in this tutorial we also explain how to implement this method in Python by using the SciPy library. Here is a brief outline of this video tutorial. First, we will start with the basics of importance sampling method. We will explain the concept of the proposal function and the concept of importance weights. Then we will introduce the Monte Carlo estimator that's based on the importance sampling. And finally, we will explain the Python codes that implement the importance sampling method. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial, as well as almost 500 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. First, we will briefly revise the Monte Carlo method for approximately computing integrals involving functions of random variables. We consider this problem. Here is an integral. In this integral, f of x is the probability density function of the random variable x, and g of x is a nonlinear function. The real numbers a and b are integration bounds. They can also be plus or minus infinity. This integral can also be seen as the expectation of the random variable g of x, where again g is a nonlinear function of x. The Monte Carlo method approximates this integral by performing the following two steps. First, we draw n random samples of the random variable x from the distribution described by f of x and let these samples be denoted by x1, x2, x3 until xn. Then, in the second step, we approximate the integral by this expression. We simply take our samples and we evaluate the value of the function g of x at these samples. Then, we compute this sum and we divide the sum by the number of samples n, and that's it. It's a very simple approach for computing these integrals. It can be shown as n goes to infinity, this approximation actually approaches the exact value of this integral. This simple Monte Carlo method makes an assumption that it is possible to draw samples from the distribution described by f of x. Now, in a number of scenarios, it might either be impossible or very difficult to draw samples from the distribution f of x. Also, even if it is possible to draw samples from this distribution, it might be preferable to draw samples from some other distribution. So we would like to draw samples from some other distribution and use this distribution to approximate our original integral given by the equation number one. How to do that? Let q of x be a probability density function of a new distribution we can easily draw samples from. Later on, we will give a special name to that distribution. Then we can transform our original integral like this. Here's our original integral, and over here I can multiply g times f by the term q of x divided by q of x, and consequently I obtain this form of the integral. Let us introduce a new variable, that is, let w of x be equal to f of x over q of x, then 
This integral can be written like this. W of x multiplying g of x multiplying q of x dx. Now let us analyze this integral. Since x is a random variable and q of x is actually a distribution, this integral can be seen as an expectation of the nonlinear function w of x multiplying g of x. That is, we can write this form of the integral. And consequently, we can use the Monte Carlo method to approximate this integral by this expression. Now, over here, x size, that is, these x size, are the samples of x drawn from the new distribution q of x. And keep in mind that x i are not drawn from the distribution f of x. This is very important. And where w of x i is defined like this. This approximation is the important sampling approximation of the original integral. It can be shown that as n approaches infinity, this approximation actually approaches the exact value of the integral. Furthermore, the important sampling approximation is unbiased estimator of the exact value of the integral. Next, let's introduce the following names and new terminology. The function q of x is called the proposal density or the importance density. Other names for this function are the proposal function or the importance function. We have a complete freedom to select this function. However, this function has to satisfy several requirements. First of all, it needs to satisfy this requirement. Whenever f of x, that is the distribution f, is greater than zero, q of x also has to be greater than zero. That is, f of x and q of x need to have the same support. Then, we should be able to easily draw samples from q of x. Ideally, we would like q of x to have a similar shape to f of x. Also, in order to minimize the Monte Carlo estimator variance, we would like to select q of x to be proportional to g of x multiplying f of x. In practice, we often cannot select q of x to satisfy all the ideal requirements, and we need to make a trade-off. We often need to try several different forms of q of x. Then these parameters are called the importance weights. They are computed on the basis of the samples x i sampled from the proposal density q of x. The intuitive explanation of the importance weights is that they make a weighted adjustment of the Monte Carlo average. This adjustment takes into account the fact that we are sampling from q of x instead of sampling from f of x. Now, since this is an introduction level tutorial on the important sampling, we will not discuss other theoretical properties of the important sampling method. We will talk more about the important sampling method in our tutorials on particle filters. Instead, in the sequel, we explained how to simulate the important sampling method in Python. Here we consider a test case. We consider a problem of computing the mean of a normal distribution. This problem is to compute the following expectation integral, where f of x is a probability density function of the normal distribution. Let us assume that the mean of f of x is equal to 10 and the standard deviation is equal to 5. However, let us additionally assume that we cannot draw samples from this distribution f. Instead, let us assume that we can only draw samples from some other distribution, and in our case, let us assume that this other distribution is, again, a normal distribution and denoted by q of x. The mean of q of x is 0 and the standard deviation of q of x is 6. Our distribution q of x is actually the proposal distribution. Here, for simplicity, I selected a normal distribution. You can also assume any other distribu distribution. Now, the important sampling approximation of the integral is given by this equation. Here, xi 
are random samples of the variable capital X sampled from the proposal distribution Q of X and the importance weights are defined like this. This expression is an approximation of the mean of the function f. Let's learn how to implement this method in Python. Okay, the first step is to import the necessary libraries. We need the NumPy library, then from SciPy we import stats. Stats is a module for performing statistics in Python. Next, we import the plotting function. The first step is to define the f and q normal distribution in Python. Here I specify the mean values. This is the mean value of f, this is the mean value of q, and just to remind you, we want to estimate the mean value of f. And this is the true value. Then the standard deviation of f is 5 and the standard deviation of q is 6. To create the normal distributions in Python, we use the function norm. That is, from the stats module, we use the function norm. We specify the mean value and we specify the standard deviation. And we do that for the function f and for the proposal function q. Next, let's plot the probability density functions of the two distributions. First of all, we need to select the starting point and the end point of our distribution for plotting. And to do that, we need to compute the corresponding percentiles. To compute the percentiles, we use the function PPF. So for a given percentile, the function PPF will return the corresponding X value. Okay, so here it is. We do it for the F function, we do it for the Q function, and over here, we are basically computing the value of distribution for the given values of x. We do it for the f function and we do it for the q function. And finally, over here, we plot the probability density functions. We set the figure size, then we plot the function f, then we plot the function q, then we set the title, we set the x and y labels, we adjust the font size, we set the x and y limits, we introduce the legend, and finally we also save the figure and show our plot. So let's execute this Python script and let's see the result. And here is the result. The function f of x, the blue one, is the original distribution. We can see that the mean is 10. And q of x is given over here, and this is our proposal distribution, and we actually draw samples from this proposal distribution. Okay. Our next goal is to draw samples from the proposal distribution q of x and to implement this expression. First of all, we need to set the sample size. Then, to draw samples, we use the function RVS, and we are drawing the samples from our Q distribution. The input to RVS is the sample size. This will be an array containing all the samples, in our case 100 samples, and over here I use list comprehensions to implement this expression. What do I do over here? Here is my weight from here to here, and I multiply the weight by Xi. And here it is. And finally, after I do that, I compute the mean. That is, I divide the sum by n. And that's it. Simple as that. Okay, so let's see the results. First of all, I will show you the results for, let's say, sample size of 10. Let's see the results. Okay, and let's look into our estimate. And the estimate is 4.14. Mm, not too good. Okay, let's see now what happens when we increase the number of samples. But before we even do that, let's repeat with the same number of samples this experiment. And let's see the output. Okay, so what happens here? We obtain 2.84. And again, we obtain 0 0.12. So what happens over here? Well, over here, every time we are actually sampling and computing the mean, we obtain a different value. That is, an estimator is actually a random variable, and this is very important to observe. Now, let's increase the number of samples to, let's say, 50, and let's see what do we get. 
The estimate is 16. Aha, 16 is much closer to the exact value of 10. Let's repeat this experiment several times and we obtain 8.42, not bad, much better than before. And finally, we obtain 10 even. Okay, very good. Now, let's increase the number of samples to 10,000 and let's run the estimation and let's see what will happen. Okay, and the estimate will be almost 10, perfect. Let's see again. And the estimate is 9.18. Very close, very close to the true value of 10. This means that as the number of samples increase, our estimate actually approaches the true value of 10. And that's it. That's the proof of principle that this approach actually works. Okay, this would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.